It is the season for good skin. Hey, I'm so excited that Clarence sent me their advent calendar. It is my favorite thing. I am terribly sick. I don't know if you've heard that in my voice, but I have the flu. And something that has helped me get through this has been skincare. Whether it's a, a Clarins mask or their double serum or their double serum eye, just basically having good skincare when you're not feeling your best is great. It's, it's truly helpful. It gets you through the hard times because you're like, I feel bad, but my skin looks good. <laughs> self-care, self-care. So go to Clarins.com and try out this iconic duo of double serum and double serum eye for yourself. Plus right now you can get 10% off and a welcome gift. So go ahead and buy your double serum, your double serum eye. Throw this in there while you're at it and use code VULNERABLE23 for 10% off, as well as a seven piece gift set. That's VULNERABLE23 to get your welcome offer only at Clarence.com. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Tis the season. Yep, tis the season to be stressed. Tis the season to be lonely. Tis the season to want to unpack things with somebody. And that's why I suggest BetterHelp. I've used BetterHelp, honestly at a time when I was extremely stressed out. And from a first hand experience, I can say that I had a great experience and that the person that I spoke to was extremely knowledgeable and qualified and ethical. Um, when I was moving from California to Texas, I, I, I really leaned on her for support. But by the time I got to Texas, she was like, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't do that. I can't practice um, in a different state. But the thing is, is that I really enjoyed the service. It's convenient, you know? I think that you could really just commit to yourself, right? So in the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. You can visit betterhelp.com slash vulnerable today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash vulnerable. Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Vulnerable. I am so honored that I have the best guest today. Um, we never really got to connect prior, but uh, we did recently connect on socials and I was like, when can you sit down with me and I breathe the same air as you? So Christina Kirkman, um, you know, she most recently starred and executive produced the feature film Discontent. Um, and she's set to star in a horror film this summer. Very excited about that. Um, and prior to this, she was recurring in Ambitions, and own original series. Uh, she's a fan favorite. She's a fan favorite of mine. And uh, we all know her too from all that. And we're gonna get into it today and just connect today on Vulnerable. We're related. We are related. Let's talk about it. First of all, we are. The gold hoops. Yeah, obviously. That's, that's If you all can't we need. see it, you should. You should hop on YouTube right now. And look at these beautiful gold hoops. Thank you. And why is that? Why do we both have gold hoops? Tell them why. Be because we're Sicilian. And we're from the East Coast. And it's just a thing that you do. It's what you do. I don't know why you do it, but you do it. I feel like myself. And it's really funny because I didn't wear gold hoops when I was younger because my older sisters wore them. And mm. I was always like, oh, you know, they're like so... I thought they were very 90s. Totally. To be honest with you. Like I thought they were like a very 90s East Coast Italian person that would wear them. Well, you just described my mother, so that's why I wore and them. She, and that's what I'm saying. Like, my sisters wore the hoops. My my. So your mom is Sicilian. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My mom is like the white girl oh, in no. the situation. Carmela is Sicilian. Oh, Carmela is oh, Carmella. my aunt. <laughs> she knows what's up. Literally. So she wore bandanas, hoops, Ooh. curly hair, crop Ooh. tops. Ooh, she sounds like an She's icon. Spicy. Yeah. She's spicy. So I was wearing hoops and like, the seventh grade and everybody was like, what are you doing? I love that. But I was fashion forward, you, you know? Are. And now I just, when I have them on, I just, I feel more me. Me too. But they do say the bigger the O, the bigger the ho. I mean. So I've, I've, I've had to turn down the, the size, no, you know, Christina, in my older I, age. Girl, I literally have so many size hoops. Yeah, you just, cause you, you don't know how you want to represent your ho-ness. Okay, I have hoops that are literally. As you should. Half the size of my mm, face. So you're sending a message there. I have two children. Is it supposed to be like... Yeah, like you're, you're in the safe zone, though, if you have children. Are you sure? There's a loophole there. I mean, yeah. I'm a hoe for my husband. There you go. When he asks nicely. Listen, you want to get into the club? Big hoops. Big hoops, there you go. You want uh, to pass, o, the bigger on, a, the you so wanna pass is, on a parking ticket? Big hoops. Is this is this an Italian thing? I, I Like an I, Italian saying? I think this is an East Coast thing. Which East Coast are you from? Boston. Okay. Well, Massachusetts. We'll allow it. Okay. 
No, what, but we'll I'll allow it. Like it's I mean, not part you know of the what? East Coast. I mean, it is. I'm from. No, <laughs> are we an honorary state of the East Coast? <laughs> you said it like you were doing me a favor. Well, oh, yeah, sure. Master, we were doing life. so well. We were. That's so funny. Okay, so I'm from Connecticut, which oh. is actually the peacemaker between New York and Boston. If you okay. think about it, sure. You think about whatever you say. Who do you think Massachusetts likes more, Connecticut or Rhode Island? I mean. We don't spend the time to 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 get to know either because they're tiny and insignificant. Yeah, but right? I do I do love Rhode Island. Me too. I do too. Actually, I, do, I do love Connecticut. They're both beautiful. Is Massachusetts gorgeous? You know where too? I used to go? Where? Hawks Nest Beach. Is that Connecticut? I think it is. I will Google that, but I've never heard it of is. it. I had a friend in high school that had a beach house up there, and That's I cool. spent some time there. Do you miss it? I do. What do you miss about it? Do you miss the, the Italian, East Coast? The Italian cooking? Yeah, I, I miss the people. Mm -hmm. I miss the people. I feel like yeah. I love the lifestyle in LA. I love that we have desert mountain city ocean. I can eat whatever I want at any given time, but I miss the people. Yeah. I feel like I'm, I feel like as an East coast person on the West coast, you're very misunderstood, especially as a woman, or at least I feel that way because I'm, I use the F word as a term of endearment and I'm loud and I talk with my hands and, and people don't do that here. No. Like no matter who they are, no matter I what mean, community. I mean, I I always find my East Coast people here. I feel like most of my friends are East Coast people. That That's so my to LA. Yeah. Yeah, I remember growing up and it was very much East Coast West Coast um when I first got here. Okay, so when I first started working for Disney, I was like 14 and I I'd, I'd done a lot of theater and indie film in New okay. York City. Okay. And so like I was a to I like if you look back uh, and you watch like the pilot episode. I literally have the thickest New York accent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Same. And even in talking to you right now, I'm like, oh, it's my coming accent's out. coming out. Yeah. It's just, you. yeah, you can't help it. Oh, my God. Mine was so bad. Like yeah. mine was, I mean, I had a speech coach that was like, we're getting did, rid of this. I was going to say, did Nick give you a speech yeah. coach? Oh, no way. They I didn't want you to just Oh, I walked on set and they were like, <laughs> they actually, though, mm -hmm. they did write me a character based on my accent because I feel like the East Coast accent, whether it's Boston or New York, yeah. is like so, people are so fascinated by it. It's so aggressive. Like even now, it's so trendy. It's so aggressive. <laughs> that when I came up and my mom, like for an example, what, do you, what did you used to call a purse? Did you- What do you mean? Like growing up, what did you call a bag? Did you call it something? Maybe it's a Massachusetts thing. A, a, a balso? We like called what? it a pocketbook. <laughs> Oh yeah, for okay. sure. Your pocket so book. when we were on set, like day one, my mom was like, "Oh yeah, go grab your pocketbook." And everybody oh, was yeah. like, "What the fuck did you just say?" <laughs> so then they wrote me this like Boston character. But other than that, they got rid of my accent. And then I went to school for broadcast journalism, and they were like, "Yeah, you got a <laughs> non-regional go. diction." Yeah, no. So it's gone. So do you have even more non-regional diction? Yeah, like even more so because oh, I can still tell you from the East Coast. <laughs> oh, oh, when I do my little like reporter voice i bet i bet let me it's hear gone. it i need to hear it oh my god it's been so long here read here read something <laughs> here i don't know <laughs> i have a blue piece of paper that has props <clears throat> christina kirkman most recently starred in and executive produced the feature film discontent she is set to star in the horror film this summer i love that reporting yes. from podco i'm christina kirkman so did you actually go to school for I to did. be a newscaster i did <gasps> Well, I went for broadcast journalism. Okay. I mean, it was journalism, and then I, I wanted to do the broadcast side of it. But mm -hmm. in order to do journalism, I mean, we did everything. We did writing. We did producing. We did, um, you know, editing, everything. Yeah. And then I was like, I don't want anything to do with this. Wait, what um, what, what stories attracted you the most? Uh, so we, like, we had beats in college, and my beat was the North End. Like, we had certain neighborhoods. Um, and I loved the crime. Like I love North End is kind of it's kind of rough. Well, I mean, it's Italian, right? Yeah. So there's there's, there's a lot of big hoops, a lot of big hoops, <laughs> a lot of drama. <laughs> lot and of I would drama. like, you know, my mom would be calling me like, you can't be showing up like trying to find these stories in the North End. OK, just stay away. <laughs> like, what do you think? The, the mafia is going to come like, you know, I love I how you just said the mafia. I know my mom's like, first of all, the mafia doesn't exist anymore. Uh, according to my mother, the mafia exists. OK, okay I have okay. a crazy Italian mother. OK, let's talk. I want to meet your mom so bad and oh, I want perfect. to try her meatballs. Perfect. What, we'll how, does your, how does your mom make her meatballs? Well, my mom, we're we're healthy Italians. No, you're not. Yeah, we Shut are. I know it's kind of a here. disgrace. Like. We do. I'm we taking do the, those hoops right now. We, I know. I know. We do the <laughs> whole thing, but like sometimes instead of pasta, we'll do um, what's the lasagna, like a spaghetti squash. Oh yeah, that's nice. It's healthy though. Yeah, that's that's yeah. yeah. But like according to like a, a, a an Italian, that's yeah. Like, you know, oh my God, you can't do that. Yeah. Um, we're modern day. 
No, that's great. Modern day, modern yeah. day Sicilian. Yeah. No, We're I a love Americanized. That. What? But how does she make her meatballs? Or can you not tell me? No, I can't tell you. I know that. I was trying to get I the goods. I can't tell you that. I just have to eat them and then be like, they're delicious. And yeah. obviously, you put peas on your pasta. Huh? This is a Boston thing. No, it's not. It's an Italian thing. Do you do Feast of the Fishes? No. Okay. We don't. You, have you ever done it though? I have. Okay. I feel like I did it because, okay, so, so my dad was the Sicilian one. Okay. My grandfather, grandmother, they had a bakery called Mama Romano and Six Sons. Ooh. Flo, Florence Romano. Ooh. And uh, Joseph, Joseph Romano. And then my dad's Tony Romano. That's literally my dad. So you, ha you had a lot of good, you had a lot of good Italian food growing up. And they literally had, I had five uncles. All um, named Tony. All named like Joey. And yeah, of course. Like, uh, yeah. And we had a Carmelo and, and like course, cousin or whoever. To. I mean, really, we, we, we were truly very much an East Coast Italian family. And it's so wonderful to talk to you. I haven't, I feel like I just, I feel like we're a dying breed. No, I love that we like. We didn't even talk about that's this. That's what I like. I like that we kind of knew, like I love going into a movie where you don't know what the plot's going to be. And then you're like, oh my God, this is so good. I like meeting people that's and kind of not knowing anything. <laughs> Me too. People are like, so you great. don't, people are like, you don't research your guests. I'm like, that's half it's, of the fun. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I had no idea. I mean, I knew you were from the East Coast and yeah. I knew you were a child actor and that's it. Yeah. That's great. Look at us. And now we're friends. We're fucking besties. I love this. Me too. Well, no, we, we have to be. Obviously. I was, you get it. Can we talk about yes. um, Sicilians being vengeful? And can you tell me yes. if you've keyed anyone's car? Like no. that you used to date. You just blinked. And I think no. that you did. I think I tried to wink. No. <laughs> um, I will say this. We hold grudges. Why? Why is that? Like I have Because you know like racism and stereotypes and like you shouldn't think of that. But like Sicilians really are crazy we're, we're shit. We're fucking stubborn. Like okay. there's no logic in Sicilian. Oh my God, I'm going to get like shunned for saying no, this. No, you're not. Um, I have family members that have held grudges for like 20 years because somebody didn't say hi to the, uh, the, the daughter at a party. Yeah. Why what are we fuck? like, but why are we like this? Um, I, it's, I feel like the Italian culture and I, I me as a person too, we're so principle based. Mm -hmm. It's so it's about principle and loyalty. But unless you're super Catholic, it's not like you're um, super conservative. Correct, right? Like m all the people that I grew up in, middle class Italian American, like lifestyle, they weren't like if you knocked somebody up, like maybe like the older generations would be like, she's having the kid kind of thing. Totally. But other than that, like they were they right. Were pretty, yes. I'm I sorry, we're wild. Oh, I mean, we have to be. Is that why? Yeah. Why? Because we're the fucking life of the party. I know. It's our job. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, what's wrong with yo, us? Yo, Snooky? Yeah. She's not Sicilian. She's like, it's all right. That's that's who we have to be. <laughs> now? When, when, yeah. When we show up, <laughs> like, party's here. I know. That's I do love Snooky, though. I'm I not going to lie. Do you Snooki. follow her, too, on TikTok? Yeah, I fucking love Snooky. I love her so She's much. She's just... She has single-handedly ruined what everybody thinks of us. Yes. But I still fucking love her. What was I watching where I was like... Her and Jay Wow and, and whatever the sweet... Je, what's a sweetheart? They call her Sammy. Sweet, Sammy Sweetheart. But uh, Jay Wow and, and Snooki, just... Yeah. That, I mean, but that's a bond. I grew up on that. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was a big... I am who I am because of the Jersey Shore. Mm, interesting. I was in She's Italy. Not saying a lot, but... That's, that's mm -hmm. saying... It's all saying all Like all things. of our parties in high school were Jersey Shore themed. They were themed or they just were that? You know, that's a great it's a question. Great Wait, we wore poofs we, and cheetah. Bumpets and cheetah. Oh, fuck yeah. But like unironically. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, for real. Uh, and like cut off white t-shirts, yes. like tight little um, wife. They're not called wife beaters. Like they're our called, skin was didn't they're called match. Women our pleasers face didn't now? match our, the rest, like we were orange and then dark. You did? And, did you get a little, you got a little orange? Oh, I yeah. That was like who I was. Okay. This, I'm so excited we're talking about this. Me too. So my I really hope pictures don't start resurface because they're bad. My oldest sister is this still to this day. And she's like approaching 50. She's not 50, but she'd probably absolutely kill me. But my, it's so interesting how different people can be in a family. So like, I'm very much a blend of everything that I've ever been exposed to. Okay. I think as an actor, you just are sort of mm -hmm. like an, uh, culturally very like- uh, um, You're a sponge. Yeah, okay. I was gonna say- yeah, you change. Yeah, totally. You change like anytime you need to be changing. Uh, you have a lot of identities. But when it comes to like m my t my other f siblings, one of them is like a very like he ended up going to Babson. Okay. And which is like a very good business school in, mm -hmm. in Mass. 
And he became very buttoned up and he's in finance and he lives in Nashville now. And it's like, he's that, he's just, he lived in New York. He's just not, you wouldn't think of him as some like middle-class, atta- right. like from Tony Romano's right. seed. Um, he's very legitimate. In fact, that's like- Legitimate wh- as a person or as an Italian? Uh, as a person. Okay. So, so he's like okay. varied by the book. Okay. He's the exact opposite of my dad. Okay. Tony Romano walked around and he like owed everybody in the whole town. Okay. But everyone loved him and people would like, like they would do favors for him and, and he, and, and he didn't work on like the dollar. Okay. He worked on like the charm. I love that. Yeah. He really just. He, you are your father's daughter. I'm not. No way. No? I, I'm, I don't consider myself charming at nearly as charming as She's him. She's so humble. My, She's pretty and humble. <laughs> Hey guys, so I literally have the flu. I'm feeling great. Don't worry about me. We're good. But most importantly, isn't about sitting in how bad you feel because this is the happiest time of year. So hey, check it out. Clarence sent me this amazing advent calendar and I am psyched. When I say psyched, I've gotten it for a few years in a row. And I just love Clarence. I truly do. It's like ad but true kind of thing. And check it out. So this is gorgeous. Oh my God, I love this so much. I had to fight my mom because my mom wanted this. And I was like, no, 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 I need to open this for work. (laughs) But like, this is like a perfect gift for like like anybody that you know who really appreciates skincare. (gasps) Ooh, it's gorgeous. And you know what's really fun is that after I use this, my kids get to use this as well. So you can repurpose it because it's just made so well. Clarence is an iconic French skincare brand and a pioneer of plant-based beauty products. Their double serum is a best seller and there is a bottle sold every four seconds. It may not be coming in this, but I can assure you that all of the products in this I have tried and they truly are fantastic. Like Clarence just gets it when it comes to making effective plant-based formulas. Skincare is super helpful during flu season because I've literally been so sick and I've been putting masks on and using my Clarence stuff, my double serum, my double serum I. It's very helpful. It makes you feel instantly better because as long as your skin is good, you can still look crazy, but you know your skin looks good. So go to clarins.com and try out this iconic duo of double serum and double serum eye for yourself. Plus right now you can get 10% off and a welcome gift. So go ahead and buy your double serum, your double serum eye, throw this in there while you're at it and use code vulnerable23 for 10% off as well as a seven piece gift gift set that's a vulnerable 23 to get your welcome offer only at clarence.com um <laughs> my husband is very charming but he's very different in that he's an he's actually a very good husband mm. um and i'm so proud of my brother because you know he's very much an italian i never dated italian men oh yeah yeah can we yeah. i mean i don't I dated one he was a good one though he, he was, was a good one yeah that's but i good. but i also mm. i mean it was hard where i grew up because mostly everybody was italian or irish yeah, so, well, I d- oh, girl. you had to pick one. Sweetheart, I married Brendan Rooney. Okay, so you know. Christy Romano married Brendan Rooney. I mean, my mother is Carmela <laughs> Ternulo, and yeah. she married Christopher Curley. So were you never, I, I, I would have been, I would have been Irish all, all the time. <laughs> it was like, we what, going what, to what anger, so what anger do you want? Do I you know. want the Italian anger? I'm, I'm yeah. uh, Italian and Irish. I, say, I can say these things. <laughs> you want Chianti drunk or yeah. do you want whiskey drunk? Exactly. Pick. You just pick the lesser of two evils. <laughs> I'm not dating either. I'm so. Oh my god, are we getting canceled from this episode? Yes, I'm oh, canceling shit. us. Oh shit. Um, no, but for real, like that is. I, it's so fun to talk to you. I love this. I never really have connected with anybody like this before. We have a lot of common ground. This is crazy. I love it. So no, but for real, like even my brother though, like as as good as a man as he is, he's a really great husband. Sometimes he can flare up a little bit and think that women oh, yeah. women are a little bit like mm-hmm. you know they need to fall in line and 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 as an older brother that was very helpful. Yeah. Um. Because my two sisters wild. Uh-huh. Oh my God, my poor brother. Are They're the, older than him. I'm you, the youngest. Okay. Okay. So do you have I'm an only child. I should be asking you questions. Yeah, no, I'm I'm I love this. You're an only child? I know. It okay. doesn't show? No. Oh, thank you. I thought, you know, we're okay. related. But also yeah. I thought you probably came from a bigger family. I come from uh, actually a small Italian family. Okay. Um, and I'm an only child. But then you're probably had you had other families around you, right? I a lot of grew up with all adults. Interesting. Like I was always, I, I loved being alone. I'm very much a lone wolf. I've always mm. loved being alone, even as a kid. And then 
being an only child and having a small family, the kids that were in my family were either significantly younger mm -hmm. or significantly older. So I was always with the adults. And then I worked in Hollywood. Like I was just always surrounded by adults mm -hmm. that I feel like I grew up very fast. Okay. In a, in a positive, and I say that in, in a positive context, but- um, Like it's not like you were given too much responsibility correct. too early. Correct, What no. do you mean then? I mean, um, like I, you know, I have younger family members and I just like watch how they communicate with adults versus how I communicated with adults at that age. Hmm. Like I was like, like adults could sit down with me and have a full conversation with me at a very young age. Right. And it wasn't like, oh, you're talking to a child. Like right. I could kind of hold my own a little bit different than most kids my age. That's kind you were of just more I mean. comfortable around them. Totally. Because kids do tend to like ignore, yes. shut down. Yes. So speaking of sort of having this approach to life then, let's talk about the Nickelodeon talent competition. Kid in a, the, what is it? The Search for the Funniest Kid in America. Are you all that? The Search for the Funniest Kid in America. 2003. 2003. Holy shit. That was 20 years ago. I don't remind me. <laughs> were, were you doing theater? Were no. you just funny? Were you I just, was just, listen, I didn't even watch all that, which is crazy. Like, yeah, I, I watched. Only, I only watched SpongeBob. I only watched animation growing up as a huh. kid. I mean, SpongeBob to this day is my favorite show in the entire world. I watch it almost every night. I loved to entertain. And I think being an only child, like I was always the fucking kid that was like, guys, I learned a song today or mm. let me perform this. I loved entertaining. Mm -hmm. And then I saw this competition and I was like, dad, I got to enter this. And my mom, I don't want to say my mom being the more cynical one. Well, uh, she's Sicilian. She, yeah, she. We're right. pretty cynical people. There you go. <laughs> and my dad was like, yeah, awesome, great. Ran, got the video camera. <gasps> That's sweet. And we went online and you went by your last name. And my prompt was, uh, they sent me some sides, some different scenes. And then I had to do three impersonations. And my first scene was meeting Jay Leno. Crazy story. Meeting Jay Leno, which I responded. My mom probably had an aneurysm. And I said, Ma, who's Jay Leno? Um, funny story, he was the first celebrity I ever met. The day I landed in Los Angeles, I went to Bob's Burgers and Jay Leno was in the parking lot in one of his fancy Amazing whips. cars. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And my mom was like, that's Jay Leno. <laughs> went over, took a photo, and then my mom's camera got stolen that day and I never saw that photo. It didn't happen. You're making it up. I know. I think it Pixar, was- Pixar, it didn't it happen. The Mandela effect? Yeah. I think that's what I happened to me. I think that's what me. happened, yeah. Um, that happens a lot to people who are child actors. Exa exactly. We, do, we just remember everything. It's just, just you know, let's discredit I wasn't even a child actor say. i'm it's all a hallucination <laughs> um so yeah i i did i submitted my tape and again like they did in-person castings all the child actors went and in like, new york in la i think they okay. had it in new york oh for sure and maybe chicago okay. somewhere else um maybe florida Sure. Okay, because I know they had like studios in yeah, Florida yeah, yeah. once upon a time, and they had really they had cool multiple studios. in person, right? And you know, as like an actor, like who the fuck is watching the tapes? Like if there's in person auditions nowadays, no one's, yeah, there's yeah, just too many. Exactly. Um, it was That's ten thousand kids. Oh my god! And then I made um, top. So they would uh, on Friday nights they would air like they would narrow it down. So it was I think the first bit was top fifty from ten thousand. And I was top 50. That's then, a huge cut. It is a big jump. The following week, top 10, and then top five. Top five all had to fly, uh, fly out to Los Angeles mm -hmm. and do a skit. So my skit was with Taryn Killam, Jamie oh, Lynn Spears. Him. Oh, wow. Lisa Foyles and Kyle Sullivan. Mm. And Can we find that online? I, yeah, I have it. Okay. I got, I got all this girl. I love that. Um, Cause we also hoard things. Perfect. Yeah. And then we, I won. Yeah. I won. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Spoiler alert. I won. <laughs> um, and the guest judges were, and I actually just posted this um, last month. The guest judges were Josh Peck, Nick Cannon and Amanda Bynes. <gasps> oh yeah. And Taryn Killam was the host. And I just remember being backstage and there was two other people in the top five whose name started with like either a, C, a K or a C, like had a K. And I just remember the whole thing being in fucking slow motion. I like bet. the winner is Christina Kirkman. And I just kind of, I paused and then some PA was just like ripping my wrist and throwing me on stage. And I walked out and it was just like, felt like 3000 kids. And then they slimed you. No, but I did get slimed. <laughs> of course. Um, 
yeah, it was wild. And then it was like, you know, we couldn't tell anybody that I won because it hadn't aired yet. Mm. And I was a competitive gymnast at the time. I was obviously in school. So mm -hmm. my mom on Monday called and was like, um, there's a possibility she might have to stay out here. And then that's it. My mom quit her job. Wow. Yeah. What, what did she do before? She worked in advertising. Oh, great. Yeah, so she, she worked did, in advertising. She did good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, wow, that's a huge... She just quit her job. What did she... Was lived she, at the Oakwood Apartments Oh, no, me. please, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, geez, baby. Oh, no. And, Everything oh, yeah. ends and up then, at the Oakwood. Did I end up... Well, no. Then they moved us to the... At the time, the Avalon Studio City, which is where I ended up living. That was like the work lofts, no, Avalon? Or is it like the same as Oakwood's? Now no, Oakwoods I, is called Ava. Yeah, I know. I legit, I just want to throw this out there and, and somebody can probably make it. But like there needs to be an Oakwoods movie. There needs to be a reality show. But yeah. I guess it's not great to have all these young kids on a reality show. But there yeah. needs to be something. There because should be something. That everybody lived like, at the Oakwood at yeah. some point in time. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was, I remember you go to the pool and like, you know, every kid from every show is just like, it just was such a weird Wild, thing. right? I know. So and then we're talking mom, decades too, because when yeah. I when I originally came out here, I was like, I want to say I was like nine years old um, and my brother was with me and he ended up hanging out with the kid from Free Willy and the Doublemint Twins. Oh like, yeah. So he, it's, it's like, we're talking like into the early, oh, early yeah. 90s. Yeah. I mean, any child actor at any given time is like, oh yeah, the Oakwood. The Oakwood. Was just, that, was, that was the thing. <laughs> what a time. Oh so yeah, my mom lived out there. My dad owned a business at the time. So he, he flew every month. Aw, he miss you? Yeah. Did you I mean, miss him? Yeah, but they mm. like, you know, as an adult, I'm like, wow, that's a big sacrifice that my parents made. Um, I'm very grateful that, you know, I had a parent that was with me 24 seven. I mean, all my early call times, she, there was not a day I was on set that my mom wasn't there. So, and I think that is also why my experience was more so positive. Look, I think that people generally know as a parent intuitively, um, especially if she's She's cynical. I mean, there's a reason for that. Oh, yeah. If you're a parent and you care about your kid, like, just show up for them. Like, oh, don't yeah. leave. Like, I get it. it. It's not daycare. It's literally like your job is them, right? Like, 100%. So that's amazing, though, that she was able to do that. Yeah, she was in everything. Did they put you up at the Oakwood then? Yep. That was like part of the deal. You're mm -hmm. like, I can move I out there car, and I can do this. We got a car. We, you know, that's great. The whole, yeah, it was great. That's great. Because then it really justified her not having Totally. And yeah. like, again, my, I, my, they wouldn't have let me do it if, they were in a situation where my mom could be out there with me. No shot in hell. Yeah, of course so. not. Wow. Okay, so what was it like working with Amanda Bynes? I loved Amanda. Amanda, one of the nicest people I had ever met in, in my time. Um, she was just, uh, I mean, she was the person that I fangirled over because Amanda was a huge reason why I loved comedy and why I loved Nickelodeon and I loved the Amanda show um and having her support that was like the best because she like I mean my parents talked a lot with her and she gave us a lot of advice and she did say which looking back um my parents spoke with her pretty much every time she was on set mm. and uh she said to my parents she said if she loves this, it'll always be here for her. Let her go be a kid if she ends up wanting to go home and be a kid. Hmm. And my parents didn't tell me till later on because again, it was one of those things that my parents were like, if you're not having fucking fun, we'll pack our bags. And They're we like, we, we don't know that. Shit. They're like, we know yeah. that. Okay. But yeah. hearing it now, think now hearing it, thinking about it again as an adult. You think maybe you know, she was kind of projecting because she was like, I want to save her from something that maybe I didn't get. Yeah, or, I, I okay. mean, I mean, I'm not putting no, words in your mouth. No, I I, I, that's I, that's exactly like I, I mean, I remember her saying something like, you know, let her go to her prom or or oh, whatever it is. Girl. And, you know, when you're raised in that, you you miss out on all of that. So this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. You know, we talk a lot about feelings and stories and things that have happened um, to us on Vulnerable um, and quite honestly, I am not a qualified <laughs> therapist. I am not a person who ever claimed to be. Um, but most importantly, during this holiday time, it's really, really vital to certain people to find help. Um, and I 
really am grateful to have BetterHelp as one of our sponsors because, you know, I used BetterHelp at a time that I moved houses and it really was a great resource for me to find a bright spot in all of it. If you're curious about therapy, you can give BetterHelp a try. Uh, BetterHelp is very convenient. It's on your phone and you can match with someone after taking a questionnaire. And uh, if you don't like them, you do not have to stay with them. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. You can visit betterhelp.com slash vulnerable today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash vulnerable. So I love Amanda Bynes um, so much. Uh, everything that she's uh, sort of persevered through mm -hmm. uh, makes me think of her often. And um, uh, she was such a hard worker at such mm -hmm. an early age. You know something? I actually did meet her. Um, Variety had given us an award of like top five under a certain age uh -huh. or something like that. Uh, and it was, yeah, Variety's top five to watch. That's what it was. And it was Amanda and it was me and we went to the Oakwoods and oh, we received yeah. her. I know, right? Like, why were we at the Oakwoods? Because all things lead to the Oakwoods. Absolutely. And um, I just remember, you know, we have a picture of us somewhere that my mom took and and our paths crossed then. And then I, I virtually never heard about her in the same circles as me because Disney and Nickelodeon really did not. Yeah, we all, I don't know like how you guys were, but we all hung out on each other's sets. So, like I knew all the Nick kids and Got we it. did a lot of, like we did um, uh, on-air dares. So like oh, yeah. Unfabulous, Ned's Declassified. Uh, what else was on? I mean- Victoria's. Uh, Drake and Josh. Drake and Josh. And then eventually yeah, yeah. iCarly, like we were all- Yeah. We were all homies. We all hung out together. That's cool. Yeah, it was great. At the Oakwoods. No, I mean, <laughs> just, you know, on set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when in doubt, most of us lived at the Oakwood, yeah. I love that. That's so funny. Yeah, but she- We all went, by the way, the intersection of that would yeah. have been if we all went to Universal City Walk and we would have seen each other. City Walk was the place. It wasn't as touristy as it is now for some reason. I Probably because of the Harry Potter land. Yeah, that'll that do it. Got there. Um, but for real, like everybody- Did you live at Oakwood? Yes, I've lived at Oakwood twice in my life. Okay, like okay. I literally, like I've I've gone back there. Like, uh, yes. Okay. City Walk was the coolest thing ever. Oh yeah, it was like well, we did uh, for when the top five, the first like bonding thing we all did is they let us all go to Universal. Mm -hmm. The top five of us, and I was like, wow, this is so fucking cool. You're like, I'm part of something. This is wild. I'm just like at Universal with these like kids, and I mean, it was just crazy. Okay, so Amanda was kind of like your mentor then because she judged you. I right? mean, like I, she was one of the three judges. She, she was one of the three judges, and and. You know, when I won, there was a lot of talks of like, she she reminds us of Amanda Bynes. Mm -hmm. It's like I the new age Amanda Bynes. Um, I mean, she could have been threatened by that easily. I, I, I think that at that point in time, her time on Nickelodeon, and I, I feel like she had already evolved past that. Interesting. So she was like, I'm, this is good. I'm yeah, glad yeah, totally. I mean, she was so like, I remember when I, when I won, you know, one of the clips was, I think Nick Cannon was like, you know, she reminds me of a young Amanda Bynes. Sure. And Amanda Bynes was like, I'm flattered. I want to be her friend. And um, I was just like, this is so fucking cool. Like she was my idol. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, also Brittany, I, I loved Brittany. I mean, we, did I you get with FaceTime Jamie. with, oh, with Jamie and Brittany? Yeah, okay. so Brittany was on set a lot. Cool. I mean, they, she was the most, I mean, just yes ma'am no ma'am like just so respectful mm -hmm. and kind um we had gone we had gone out we used to go out shopping with Brittany and Jamie and and like you know it was my first time experiencing like paparazzi and oh yeah and I remember one day in particular I was crying uh because me Brittany and Jamie and my mother went to I think Abercrombie and I was crying because I couldn't, I was too small to fit in all the clothes yet. And, you mm -hmm. know, Jamie and Brittany were so cool and they could shop at Abercrombie. And I remember crying. Um, I think we went to Brittany's Santa Monica. She had a place in Santa Monica at some point that we went to. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I was just really lucky that the kids on that show, because it was such a big cast, mm -hmm. they were like, I mean, they just, you know, took me in. I was the youngest one on set. And mm -hmm. I was probably so fucking annoying following them all around. You said you were following oh uh, my Devin God. around? Oh yeah, he was He was my first Aww. in real life crush. Yeah. I, would, yeah. I would follow him around. Um, He's a good guy. Yeah, I mean, he was a good guy at 
I, I mean, I was 10. Yeah, yeah, he was a good guy yeah. as a kid. He also talks a lot about how, like, their experience at Nick was great. Their creator was yeah. so supportive and loving. And 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 I think that's great. I yeah, that's I mean, awesome. if you, not everyone's experience is the same. Totally. Not everyone's trauma is the same. And, totally. Um, uh, I, do, I do wonder, though, how... Okay, so I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you this, okay? It's nothing about anything, anyone in particular. Okay. But, like, when you see people that you knew intimately... Like over time, I can relate to this too because okay. I've had co-stars that have kind of gone down a really crazy path, um, and you kind of are like implicated in having an opinion because people are always like, "Oh, are you still in right. touch with so and so?" But like, how do you feel? Because I know that my heart breaks in pieces that I can't mend for them. Totally. Like, how do you feel when you see like you know Amanda struggling? I mean. Or Brittany. I'm very grateful. And, and the older I get, the more grateful that I am that I made the decision to leave. Oh. Um, because I was a competitive gymnast at the time. I all of a sudden, like overnight, my life changed. I picked up. I moved to California. I'm, I'm doing this show. I'm working full time. And when, this, when, we, had, when this, we had wrapped at season 10 and I was offered to work and to have my own show and to do other things. And I remember looking at my mom and being like, I wanna go home. And my mom was like, great, we're did, we'll go home. What, did something happen for you to no, be like, I'm done? I just, I wanted to be an Olympic gymnast. That was always my dream. And I was training with a coach in LA, but it was so hard for me to do because I was working these long hours and all of the things that I loved, um, I wasn't able to do. And I miss just like being a normal kid. My trauma happens from when I went back to Massachusetts, which we can talk about. Yeah. Um, that was a horrible experience going back. But I went to normal college right after we wrapped Even Stevens, and it was probably one of the biggest mistakes I could yeah. have Yeah. I mean, it was horrible mm -hmm. uh, for many years, many, many years. It was bad. Um, but I went home and uh, I'm very grateful because I went to high school, I went to college, and then I made the decision myself to move back to Los Angeles to be an actor. Yeah. And I felt. I have friends now that have remained child actors through everything um, and to no fault of their own, but they just like, um, they have no they perspective. Lose sen yeah. They yeah. just lose sense of I'll reality. I'll finish the sentence for you. <laughs> yeah. They, they just, they've always been given everything to them. Oh. Like I've worked service jobs and I've, you know, I, I was able to like go and live a normal life and then come back out. And for to make the decision as an adult on your own to go back into Hollywood, you must really fucking love it because it's like, who wants to do that? Like, you're just, you're the hardest working unpaid intern. Like, you never know when you're going to get your next paycheck. You have to, like, claw your way to the no time. residuals. I mean, yeah, it's fucking horrible. Yeah. Um, but I just didn't, knew. You, all, you guys did not get any residuals. Yeah, we didn't get We did. Shit. You didn't. Nope. Yeah. But I also, got, after a I also got screwed over because, I mean, they wanted to take advantage of, of me because it's like, oh, this girl's, she doesn't know anything she about the industry. She won a contest. Yeah. And She's then I had, happy to be here. I had a whistleblower at Nickelodeon pull my parents aside and be like, do you know what a Q score is? And they were like, no. And they were like, this is your daughter's Q score. Do you know where she falls right now? In between Lindsay Lohan and the Olsen twins, go back into that room and renegotiate that contract. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. We went back into the room. Hell and I still got, yeah. I still got. Man, I want to know this whistleblower. This person is yeah. dope. Yeah. That is the person. We, I mean, we knew nothing. We and were the fact like, that you can't even say their name is fucked. Yeah. Because why wouldn't people want No one's looking out for you, right? They're like, why is that a bad thing? Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Especially totally. when we're talking about kids. That's totally. All. That's all I'm saying. And taking I get it if it's business with adults and it's like, oh no, the budgets. And, right, right. But we're talking about like kids and like you're trying to- you are that at that point you are trying to exploit a child by not paying them what they're worth. Well, and the contest brought in a whole new like once the contest happened, it was it's incalculable. Yeah, your, your influence at that point was so incalculable. It was just you, and no one was there to tell me. Like, and, could you imagine if you had social media then? How many followers you had had? I'm so happy I did not have social media then. Interesting, because now you're really killing it. I love thank seeing you. you. That's how we connected. And thank you. I love all of the stuff. You're so capable. And you, thank you. We just shot some TikToks and it was so much fun. It was and, fun. You and I are both addicted to TikTok. It must be a Sicilian thing. It is. It's Everything so fucking fun. Leads to Oakwoods and Sicilians. In and this you know, episode. you know why we appreciate it so much. Why? Because being in Hollywood as kids, being in Hollywood, period, you have zero control mm -hmm. of what you do. You don't get to pick the characters you play. What you get to say. You don't get to. You barely get to pick your representation or people that like you. And social media is the first time where you get your power back, and you're like, I get to control what the fuck I put out there and mm -hmm. what content I want to do, and it's so fucking freeing to mm -hmm. do that it's like when you came back here it was your own choice now totally. i'm curious what was it like when you were back there what happened it was horrible why bullying like what i mean again like you know 
this is before social media and influencers. If you were on a television, you were a superstar. Mm -hmm. And if you were on the most popular child's TV show and you were going back to suburbia, yeah. you, it was, I mean, I remember like the first day I arrived at my house, there was just like people at my house waiting for me. And I couldn't go to the mall. I would be swarmed and I would come home and cry and be like, I just want to like go places. And my biggest insecurity was I was still doing gymnastics when I went back and I was so isolated because kids didn't like this shit didn't happen. Right. And kids didn't know how to act. Mm -hmm. And then like all of a sudden this chick that was just on that I, we just watched 10 minutes ago on television is like walking into our Rhode Island gymnastics meet. Mm -hmm. And then all these girls would congregate and whisper and point. And I remember like doing routines at competitions and out of the corner of my eye, just seeing like all of these girls like whispering and pointing. And mm -hmm. I was just so insecure. And mm -hmm. I, I resented my experience for a very long time. I didn't want to talk about it. I, I, Interesting. I, yeah, it was, I, I just, I found it really hard to live a normal life. And then I was always like, I was tired of being known as the all that girl. I was just always trying to break free of that because then I went to high school in a town, it was two towns over from me. I wasn't going to know one person. And like people already had a perception. Oh, that's the, all that girl. Mm -hmm. You know, people would like- That's your brand. At lunch, some kid would stand up on the table and start singing the all that theme song and like everybody would join in. And I didn't have the confidence at that time. Like if that happened to me now, I'd be like, yeah, what the fuck is up? But like at that time, I was just so- insecure that this was happening and I felt like people already had a perception of me and I was not myself and I was not confident and I I I hate that I hate the relationships I developed during that time because it wasn't me and just for a long time I just wasn't myself and I I it was so hard and it wasn't until I went to Emerson which is you know it's a great school with a great arts program yeah I I applied I applied to Emerson and, and there's a lot of child actors that went there and then there's a lot of like child you know, kids of- Who else went there? Um, you know, who was there at the same time? Sofia Vergara's son was in my- um, Oh, yeah. He was in my, either a year older than me or He did my, those head and shoulders commercials with yeah, her. They yeah. were really cute. Yeah, so he was at Emerson. So yeah. that was the first time that like when I went and people found out, I think they did an article um, that I was going to Emerson. Mm. So when I got to Emerson, so many people were like, oh my God, we loved all that. Like you were my childhood. And that was the first time that I was like, oh, these are all theater kids. Like I can, you know. These I'm, are my people. Yeah. So. That sucks. I'm sorry that that. that it's fine. I mean. Do you I, feel like gymnastics was kind of taken away from you as a passion? Because that's the whole reason you left here. Because yeah. of the distractions of that. Yeah, I mean, gymnastics was a, at the level that I was competing at. Gymnastics was a full time job. Yeah, and and I tried to train, and it was so hard to train out here. And the older you get, gymnastics especially, like you have to be young because mm -hmm. then you reach an age where you're like, I could die. I don't want to do this stuff. So it was so hard for me to get back into it because when I took that m amount of time off and I came back, I just had like a super bad mental block because I'm like, this is really dangerous. I can't. I don't want to be doing this. So a couple of gymnasts came out about that, right? About the mental block. Totally. Was I mean, that Simone. Uh... I mean, it, it's like a known. That's just a known thing in okay. in the gymnastics community. Like for an example, when I was, I believe I was training with like one of the Russian Olympic coaches in Los Angeles at the Culver City School of Gymnastics, and it was my first day in LA. And I said, Hey, can you just spot me? I haven't done this trick in a while. And he's like, We don't. We don't do spots. And I just, it took the love away from gymnastics where it's like, I love gymnastics because I was going to practice with all my friends and like we would train. And you flipped and you yeah. had fun and with And then your body. We, would, we would train for eight hours and then go to one of our places and like make up gymnastics routines to like, Aww. it was just the camaraderie obviously yeah. wasn't there when I was in LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, going going back home was. What'd your mom do? They they did the best that they could. It's gotta they, be so hard to stand by Well, message your boards, like, so. We, I mean, message boards were at the time and, and my mom was always checking the message boards and printing things out and like, you know, and I remember they never let me go on them. And I remember one day I ended up going on them and it was just like thousands of thousands of that. I mean, it's like reading TikTok comments and like <laughs> you have some kids that are like, oh my God, Christina is the coolest person ever. And then you have other comments that are like, she should die. She should go kill herself. She's whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And when you're already like teetering on the line of being super insecure and then you read that, like I just wanted to be likable. I just wanted to be normal. I just wanted kids. I was too, so man. desperate. I totally relate to this. Oh my God, I was so desperate to I be like liked. I like fantasized about like um, teen movies. Like I would watch them and I'd be like, that's the experience yeah. that I deserve and I want to have. And like, 
just I'm, so desperate for like yeah. validation and uh-huh. and you know and then it's hard too like my experience was for the most part was really great however like i had some bad experiences with like agencies and casting directors who would you know tell my mom she should just do beauty pageants or she needs to cut her hair or she's too skinny or she needs to do this i mean i went in for one of the bigger agencies as a kid mm-hmm as soon as I, you know, was on the show, they were like, you guys need an agent. So we were going to all the big wigs. Sure, yeah. And I, They'll take your call. They'll, yeah. t- they'll oh, take your money. They were taking us out to dinner. They were oh, like, yeah. you know. And I remember I went to one of them and they gave me a monologue and there was a huge conference table. And again, I have no experience with acting. Like I don't, I'm just entertaining in my mind. They give me a monologue. And you, and, and there's the fact that you said there's like a huge uh, conference table. Oh, it was the most intimidating situation. Yeah, like a really long a ass fucking, yeah. yeah. I stand at the front and they're like, great, if you could just read this monologue. I look at it. I read the first sentence. Stop. Can you do it? You need to do it again. Can you hit this line more? Mm-hmm. Did it again. Stop. I mean, I must have stopped like 20 times. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even casting directors. I can't tell you how many times I would. I hated auditioning. I hated it. Hated it. Hated it. Yeah. I was Me like, too. I don't want to do it. I, I don't want to. Yeah. I'm done with As it. As a kid, I was like, so I don't want to fucking do this But also, shit. like, I understand if, if you don't want to give me an offer, I get that. Totally. And there are kids. And again, like, the kids that I worked with were child actors. Like, they went on auditions. They had agents. They knew how to do that stuff. For yeah. me, it was like, I took it personally. I'm like, why am I reading this? And you're telling me I'm too skinny or I need to cut my hair or like, I'm not reading that right. But I or, also think that's kind of like, that's like good that you felt that way. Like you weren't groomed to just accept that kind of like, no, treatment. No, I, ha- I hate like, it. It's actually really normal for you to be like, this isn't right. This isn't, this isn't human. Yeah. I, isn't I mean, cool. I'm 10. Yeah. Like, it, it, Really? Like, there's a way to communicate. This isn't going to work if you're so, communicating. So, um, question: Because you were such a high performing gymnast, w- was there any similarities between? Yes. Being, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. The criticism, Discipline. Or the rejection. Yeah. What? I mean, for one, gymnastics is an individual sport, so everything you do is kind of in your own head, and that was also very similar to acting. Yeah. In a lot of ways, and the discipline. I was such a fucking perfectionist. Yeah. And that was hard for me too, is like if I had a long day on set and I didn't feel like I did something to the best of my ability, which I think all actors can relate to in general. Like I would just stew on it and stew on it and stew on it Mm. and be so hard on myself that Mm. I didn't do it perfect. And to this day, that's my flaw. I am like a perfectionist Perfectionist, to the point where like, if I don't do something perfectly, I'm like, I don't deserve happiness today. I need to just sit home and sulk Mm. about why I didn't perform at whatever level. Mm-hmm. So I definitely found that's, a connection. Okay, cool. So that's interesting. Yeah. That's, I think that's definitely something to work on. I have those tapes in my head all the time. Yeah. Oh but my God. Honestly, I think that the best thing that I could have learned was like green light yourself because yeah. it's so, it feeds that well of insecurity. Totally. Of or It doesn't feed it, but it like rather it, it helps drain it. So, well, also just like the longer you do it, realizing that so much of it is out of your control. Like you can have an you're unbelievable. Powerless. Uh, yeah, you're like powerless. Yeah, powerless. You as an actor, if you do an audition and you don't get it, you go to wow, that must have been a horrible audition. But it's like there's so many other factors. Like yeah. maybe you look too much like the the uh, one of the series regulars. But then or- it becomes how do you value your time? Because honestly, like I when the I'll be very blunt. <laughs> Why not? Right. The first chance in my life that I got to to reassure myself that I could make income was the first thing I took. I was like, if I would fantasize, if there was any other way for me to make income um, as easily at this rate, mm-hmm. like I will do it. And right. like, that's why content creation was such a good fit for me because it, it, it sort of made me fall in love with, the, uh, with media again, because I actually did want to direct. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I started falling in love with that. But like, it was, a, it was very difficult at the time. I was already pregnant and, you know, Disney wasn't just going to give me that opportunity. Right. They had a lot of female directors and I think they even had some sort of like an initiative or a program. But when I came to them and I was like, could you, I did direct a movie already. Um, and I, I went to Columbia for film. I was like, could you please like Something. consider me? And totally. they were like, you're going to have to get in line. You're going to have to show up to the sets. And I'm like, literally like six months pregnant at this yeah. point. I'm like, this is not, this can't be for me. Yeah. So I have all this know-how, all this production background, but now it's like, I, what am I supposed to do right. with that if I want to live my life? And again, like I felt like for so many, so for so many years in my twenties that I couldn't, like I was waiting for the phone to ring. 100%. So I couldn't just go travel to Europe. Yeah. You're like, always waiting for a job that you don't have. You're yeah, the, you are sucks. the, I mean, I, 
Can't I, change it. Can't change it. No. I, it's, but, and it's part of, especially when you're when you're in this industry, right? You go through this phase of like, because you have to be. You have to be doe-eyed. You have to be readily available at any given time. I mean, I missed funerals and weddings and birthdays yeah. and family time. And for a job I didn't fucking have. Yes. For a job I didn't fucking have. That's so true. And right? I was sacrificing everything. For an example, I got... I have tattoos now. I didn't have tattoos until the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Didn't have it. And the reason why I didn't have it was you're going off with the girl next door. The girl next door doesn't have tattoos. Mm. Yes, we can cover it up. But if a casting director sees you and a girl that looks just like you and you have tattoos, you're not getting the role. Don't cut your hair. Don't, don't do this to your hair. Don't color your hair because that doesn't fit what you go out for, right? Like mm -hmm. pigeonhole, pigeonhole, pigeonhole. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, okay. I'm not going to do anything that's going to jeopardize a fucking job I don't have. Exactly. 2020, I was like, fuck it. I'm going to get, I'm going to get tattoos. If a job wants me, they can fucking cover it. They're small. And mm -hmm. it was freeing for me mm -hmm. because I was like, I don't want to go off for the girl next door. Mm -hmm. I want to go off for the fucking bitch that's going to claw you with the fucking katana. With the big hoops. She'll have, she'll have fucking tattoos. Yep. So it's like you and I, and I, not that I regret because I'm, I, it, it was character development, but like. <laughs> it's grit. I learned a lot, but like. Yeah, I could barely make rent. I was working three jobs. I was dropping everything to audition. I was missing out on everything. I can't tell you how many funerals of family members I missed because I was like, oh. if I leave and there's an audition, I will never forgive you that I had to go home and oh, I didn't get... Like I was hard. just... Because at this point, I had sacrificed so much mm -hmm. that I was like, I, 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 if I'm going to do this, I have to do it a thousand percent. This has to be my entire life. Yeah. Um, and what I've learned is like now... Obviously, as an actor, there are different times in your career where like you need supplemental income and sometimes you don't. Like there have been times where acting has paid all my bills and other times where it hasn't. Yeah. And I'm very much like multiple sources of income, multiple sources that I, whatever I can do mm -hmm. and being creative, that's not reliant on this job that I don't have. That way, when I do get my audition, it's not like this audition has to pay my rent. I have, and, and when you you're have able a whole, to- You have a whole mindset. Yeah, but That's it took a really fucking long time to get and a there. Lot of therapy, I'm sure. It took it took COVID <laughs> and two strikes and yeah. no work to yeah. finally be like, I can't sit around and wait. I can't be begging people to represent me. I can't be begging people to let me in their room. Like mm -hmm. this is this is what I'm good at. I want someone to be equally stoked about me. Yeah. And like I'm not gonna compromise mm -hmm. on that, you know, because mm -hmm. it's a business. Like mm -hmm. it's just yeah, so yeah, you've I mean, seen it all too. Like you've been there, and you've been there the whole time, experiencing it on different levels. Totally. Um, well, I mean, in general, I think you're just fantastic, and I love you very much. I love you too. Are you gonna go back to Boston ever? You think you'll I was ever just live there? Oh, live there? You go back there a lot to see family, or yeah? When I was on um, Ambitions, that was in Atlanta. So, and oh, we that's helpful. Filmed for eight months. Yeah. So on my off couple of days, I would have them fly me to. Uh, Boston rather than go back to the West Coast. So I spent yeah. a lot of time with them then. Yeah. Um, I was just there. I just got back three days ago. Yeah. Um, I love it. Mm -hmm. I, again, I've <laughs> I've always been like very black and white about like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be this. I'm going to live here. And now I'm like, nothing has panned out in the way that I thought. <laughs> Not one thing. So I'm done being like, I would never live there. I'm just like, yeah, whatever you the fuck is going to happen. Truly, I'm, you I'll cannot it. know. And you like, cannot know. the fact that like you are so capable, so talented. I mean, like you Thank just, you. I, I'm really excited to see what the next like five years, two years brings you. I think we're in a really weird, unique place too. Um, and that we have this skill set, but like we're savvy enough to see the trends yeah. of like, it's not just going to be like self tapes anymore. Absolutely. It's not going to be like waiting for that phone to ring. Right. It's more or less like, how can I just green light myself? Yeah. And, and skip also just over like the trauma. Not, I mean, I think part of the reason why I was so anti TikTok too was yeah, because. Yeah, you said you were anti TikTok. Yeah, I was a hater. I was a TikTok hater. Yeah. Um, me too, though. Like, yeah, yeah, I think we all went through that. But I think for me, I was so hesitant for so long because I'm like, okay, I've sacrificed everything to be an actor. I don't want to now be a TikToker and people don't take me seriously yeah, as an like, actor. Yeah, like, what does this mean? And I was passing up on so much opportunity <laughs> and the opportunity to just entertain people, which is what I fucking love to do. And yes, I had to remind you said, myself. That's all you want to yeah, do. Yeah, I've always envisioned that as an actor because uh -huh. I love to act and mm -hmm. I love film and I love television. And I still hope that that's a way that I can continue to entertain. However, if I look myself in the mirror and I say, what makes me happy? I just love entertaining people. So I was like, why am I going to say no to opportunities that are here right now? Mm -hmm. Because 
it might affect an opportunity that could happen down the road. It's like, yeah. it makes sense why a lot of actors are on TikToks because yeah. we get to fucking entertain. Oh yeah, I think we're at a point now where-, where It's all blended. And let me tell you what, I think like, especially after the strike, when now they're feeling the hit and I'm still getting sponsored content. Absolutely. Which by the way- I gotta I'm pay not, my rent. I'm not tone deaf. Like I totally. understand how hard that is. But I've literally been, I've been in famine when others have been in feast. Absolutely. And it's a balance. And so like, I do think this is very kind of really interesting yeah. in that like people are going to realize that this is a media business. This is a branding thing. Totally. You got to think outside the I box. I mean, I, you know, lost my health insurance during COVID and like- You can get health insurance, by the way, with uh, sponsored content. If you qualify for the same amount, you can actually- uh, they, they have a new media contract that I would encourage you to look oh. into. Yes. I'm, I, I feel like I should let people get to know about this. And if yeah. it's a loophole, but since they had a new media contract made, there's a way for you to qualify for that. Okay. So. Well then that's, that's great because that would, I mean, <laughs> but I, I lost it and I was yeah, just like, I need to have something else because acting, even when acting is normal and yeah. times are normal, it's this. Yeah. You can't just be like waiting around. And plus that's like yeah. not how I want to live my life. I don't want to fucking wait around for a no, job. You have one life. So yeah. if you were to give... Um, I mean, I have probably more than one. So minute. if Amanda so. gave you really great advice, mm -hmm. what would your advice be for the next Christina? Do things unapologetically. Like, I regret all of the time that I spent being insecure about what others thought of me. And I think that ruined my creative and ruined my love to create. And you are not... Not everybody is going to like you. That is not your job. Do what you love do it unapologetically, be nice to people, give people grace, and fucking just go for it. Like, mm. just fucking go for it. Yes, be smart, but worry about the other bullshit later. If it's something that makes you excited and makes you want to get out of bed, do it. Mm -hmm. And don't worry about it. I think our biggest roadblock is worrying about what other people, I mean, same yeah. thing with TikTok. I have friends that are like, well, I don't want to post that. What if my coworkers see it? I'm like, fuck it. You have yeah. your... It's only life. You have to lean it's fully life. Lean fully into you it. You gotta do it. And Sicilians do it best. We sure do. <laughs> we sure are sponsored by Sicilians. I love that. Thank you so much for coming. It was it was really great to, I know I to adopt this. you. I don't want it to end. No, I know, I know, I don't either. Can I we don't continue? either. Trust me, I don't want to. I know. Wow. Well, you're gonna have to come on Big Name Bitches. That Perfect. would be amazing. I'll be small name bitch. Yes. But I'm a bitch, so I'll be there. We're doing it. Perfect. Yay! Thanks so much for watching this episode of The Vulnerable Podcast. To check out clips from the pod, check out the Vulnerable Podcast Clips channel, and the YouTube link is in the description.